Here we have a slightly more challenging problem for you working with the Doppler shift. Let's say we have an emergency van uh, rushing to the hospital with a sick patient moving at some high velocity and the observer here hears the frequency from this uh, siren to be 520 Hertz. Then as the uh, van rushes past and is leaving the scene and continues on, the frequency of the frequency observed by the observer now drops to 480 hertz because of course when we hear an object an object coming towards us we hear a higher frequency when an object is moving away from us we hear a lower frequency and the question then is how fast was this van traveling hmm and they're not telling us what the actual frequency of the uh, of the siren is all right how do we do that think about it this way if we use the equation that the frequency observed is equal to the frequency of the source times the velocity of sound in air which is given to us at 340 meters per second plus or minus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity of sound in air plus or minus the velocity of the source all right so we're going to apply that equation twice the first time when the van is approaching the observer the second time when the van is leaving the observer and we'll put the proper signs in there and see what we get so for approaching we're going to have the frequency, the frequency observed, which is given to us as 520 hertz, is equal to the frequency of the source, which is unknown, times 340, plus or minus the velocity of the observer, but the velocity of the observer is zero. He's just standing there, divided by 340. We're going to leave this signs alone right now. And the velocity of the source, well, we don't know what that is either, so we'll just put V sub S down. And would that be a plus or minus down here? Well, since the observer is standing still and the source is moving towards the observer, the observer will expect to hear a higher frequency because the object is approaching, which means we need this to be a bigger number compared to this, which means we need this to be a smaller number. A smaller number means we need a minus there. So that would be the proper equation for the situation where the van is approaching the observer. We'll do the same now for the van moving away from the observer. So moving away. So the equation then looks like, oh no, it's going to be 480 hertz, right? Here's a different frequency. So 480 hertz is equal to the frequency of the source. Again, it's not known what the frequency of the source is, times 340 plus or minus zero, because again, the observer is now moving, divided by 340 plus or minus the speed of the van. Uh, we don't know what that is. We'll just say V of the source. Now, what sign do we need here? Well, if the van is moving away, the observer hears a lower frequency. That means we get a smaller number here. To get a smaller number there, we need a bigger number in the denominator. A bigger number means we need to use a plus there. So now we have two equations, and they have two unknowns. The frequency of the source and the velocity of the van of the source. And that's what we're trying to find. So we have to solve these two equations simultaneously and what we're going to try and do is eliminate the frequency of the source and we can do that by solving each equation for the frequency of the source and then set them to the two equal to each other and then solve for velocity of the source so let's do that uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply this over here so we end up with 520 times 340 minus the velocity of the source divided by the 340 here and that equals the velocity, uh, the frequency of the source. Okay, so I've done one equation, do the same over here. So we take 480 times the 340 plus V of the source divided by the 340 here, and that also equals the frequency of the source. Now I can go ahead and just set those two equations equal to each other. Before I do that, I want to simplify them a little bit. So we have 520. Uh, divided by 340, and that's 1.5294, 1.5294. I'm probably keeping a few too many this decimal places, but that's okay. I don't like rounding errors. So times 340 minus V source equals frequency of the source. And uh, let's multiply that in now. So we, we multiply the times uh, 340 equals, so ooh, how about that? Yeah, that makes sense. That gives me 520 um, minus 1.5294 times the velocity of the source equals the frequency of the source. All right, so now I have a simplified equation for the frequency of the source using case one. Case two, we'll do that again. So 
Uh, multiply this times this and divide by this, so we get 480 plus this divided by this times velocity of the source. So we get 480 divided by uh, 340, and we get 1.4118. 1.4118 times velocity of the source equals the frequency of the source. Now all we have to do is set those two equations equal to each other and solve for V sub S. So that means when we take those two equations over here, we get 520 minus 1.5294 times velocity of the source equals this equation right here, which is 480 plus 1.4118, 1.4118 times velocity of the source. All right, now you're seeing where we're going with this. We need to move uh, let's say all the variables to one side and all the numbers to the other side. I'm going to move this over here and this over there. So we get 520 minus 480 equals 1.4118 velocity of the source. Plus, when we move this across, it becomes a positive. Move this across, of course, it becomes a negative. Uh, plus 1.5294 velocity of the source. Okay, combining the left and the right side, we get 40 is equal to... So 1.4118 plus 1.5294 equals, we get 2.9412, velocity of the source. Of course, now we divide both sides by the coefficient of V sub S. So we take the inverse of that and multiply that times 40. And we get 13.6. Uh, 13.6 equals velocity of the source, and of course the units, velocity will be meters per second, so the velocity of the source equals 13.6 meters per second. And there you go. So, the trick is, you use the very same equation as always. In the case of the van approaching, since the observer is standing still, we put a zero there, and now sometimes, They'll tell us, well, the observer is actually moving one direction, the other direction. Of course, then you have to add or subtract the velocity of the observer. But in this case, it's zero. Uh, this is the unknown. We have to determine the sign based upon what we expect to hear. We expect to hear higher frequency. We need a minus there. We expect to hear lower frequency. We need a plus there because it's in the denominator. Then you see that you solve the equation for the frequency of the source, which is not known. But once you have both equations solved for that, you set them equal to each other, and then it's fairly easy to solve for the velocity of the source. And that's how you do a problem like that.